ancient Hebrew scriptures foretold of the Anointed One, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His Word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples. And after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Your blessed name is Yeshua. Amen. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Bereshit, Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, verse 1 to 4. Genesis, Bereshit chapter 37, verse 1 through 4. This is uh, message P018. P018. It's called the Talit. Tonight we're going to learn about, or this morning for you guys, we're going to learn about what this garment is. How it goes throughout scripture, how important it is, how it is something that Without a deeper understanding of it, you can misunderstand what is going on about this particular garment. Is it a garment that we should be wearing today? Is it a garment that was worn throughout Scripture? Is it a garment that Messiah will be wearing once he comes back again for his triumphal return? But we're going to start out in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 37, verse 1 to 4. Genesis 37, verse 1 through 4. Yaakov continued living in the land where his father had lived as a foreigner, the land of Canaan. Here is the history of Yaakov when Yosef was 17 years old, and he used to pasture the flock with his brothers, even though he was still a boy. Once, when he was with the son to Bilhah and the son to Zilpah, his father's wives, he brought a bad report about them to their father. Now Yisrael loved Yosef the most of all his children because he was a son of of his old age, and he made him a long sleeve robe. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they began to hate him and reached a point where they couldn't even talk with him in a civil manner. Amen? Let's look back at verse 3. There's something very important that's going to be the thread for our message this evening. Now, Israel loved Joseph most of all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a long sleeve robe. Now, this long sleep robe is something very interesting. It's a, it's a garment that is given to a son from a father. It is given to a most favored son. It is given as a very special present because this son was the closest to his father. It says here, the father loved Yosef most of all. But without a deeper understanding of the Hebrew, you don't really understand what this robe is because you might think it's a beautiful terry cloth robe that you might get if you go to a very beautiful hotel in the, in the Philippines there. You go to the, one of those real fancy hotels and in the bathroom you go to take a shower and then you come out, there's these beautiful terry cloth robes. You, you put it on, it's so snugly and soft and everything like that. But I don't think Yosef was made a beautiful terry cloth robe. But he was made something very, very interesting that we're going to talk about this evening. This robe, it's really not a robe. The Hebrew word is katon or kataneth. It means tunic, undergarment, a long sleeve shirt-like garment, usually made of linen. This prayer garment that I am wearing today is made of linen. Okay, it is a very special garment that has been given to me or purchased. You can purchase them. But this one is a very special garment, not like my shirts, not like other clothing. It is a very special garment. So this garment that was given to Yosef from his father, the father of the covenant, was given to his beloved son with a very special purpose in mind. Look back now at verse 3 again. Now Yisrael loved Yosef the most of all his, grand, his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a long sleeve robe. Now 
It doesn't say a barry-colored robe. It doesn't say all that in the Hebrew. It just says a long sleeve robe. He made this linen garment. So it was something that was pretty special because there wasn't many garments being made that were of linen. You remember, they're living, there is, you know, they don't go to the local arts and crafts store to go pick up linen. They don't go to a place where you would buy all those things very easily. So here, this was something very special that was going to be a special garment for a special son. And it is for all the people that want to have a special relationship and a close relationship with their father. We're going to see in the messages this day. Now turn over to Genesis chapter 39. Genesis Bereshit chapter 39. We're going to look at verse 5 through 19. 5 through 19. We're going to look at Genesis Bereshit chapter 39 verse 5 through 19. From the time he appointed him manager of his household and all his possessions, Adonai blessed the Egyptians, house, the Egyptians' household for Yosef's sake. Adonai blessing was on all he owned, whether in the house or in the field. So he left all his possessions in Yosef's care, and because he had him, he paid no attention to his affairs except for the food he ate. Now Yosef was well built and handsome as well. In time, the day came when his master's wife took a look at Yosef and said, Sleep with me. But he refused, saying to his master's wife, Look, because my master has me, he doesn't know what I'm going, what's going on in his house. He has put me, has put all his possessions in my charge. In this house, I am his equal. He hasn't withheld anything from me except yourself, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God. But she kept pressing him day after day. Nevertheless, he didn't listen to her. He refused to sleep with her or even be with her. However, one day when he went into the house to do his work and none of the men living in the house was there indoors, she grabbed him by his robe and said, sleep with me. But he fled, leaving his robe in her hand and got himself outside. When she saw that he had left his robe in her hand and had escaped, she called the men of her house and said to them, Look at this. My husband brought in a Hebrew to make fools of us. He came in and wanted to sleep with me, but I yelled out loudly. When he heard me yelling like that, he left his robe with me and ran out. She put the robe aside until his master came home. Then she said to them, This Hebrew slave, you brought, to, uh, brought us, came in to make a fool of me. But when I yelled out, he left his robe with me and fled outside. When his master heard what his wife said, as she showed him, here's what your slave did to me, he became furious. Amen? Let's look now back at verse 12. She grabbed him by his robe and said, sleep with me. But he fled, leaving his robe in her hand and got himself outside. Amen? So Yosef escapes this, this mischievous woman. He escapes her, her adulterous ways. But because if she, if she was willing to be an adulterous wife, then lying is really nothing else for her to do. But the key here is this robe. How would the master, Potiphar, know that this was Yosef's robe. Now, he was the, the captain of the guard, so he must have had many different slaves. He was a very rich man, so he must have had many different slaves from many different countries. At this point, Egypt was you know, a, a pretty big empire. So he's the captain of the guard, so that means he's very close to Pharaoh. So he's got different people working for him. And we don't, in Scripture, we don't see any other Hebrews working for this man. So what would make this particular robe different that would show his master that this wasn't some of the other people's garments? This robe would be specific to a Hebrew person. And we're going to see 
this thread that goes through this message about this. Because these ropes, this katan, this talit that I'm wearing is different than any other garment on the face of the planet. There is no other garment on the face of the planet, and I've had the wonderful fortune of going around the globe. The only continent I haven't been on is Australia. I've never seen any other garment on the planet like this particular garment. It is a very special garment. And we're going to see that Yosef had this garment made from his father, and then he carried that, even though this is not that same garment that his father gave him, he had another one made because Joseph was also prosperous as a slave. So what would this, this garment represent to all that wish to be in a covenant with the Father? What, why would Joseph make something that is different than other people? What would set him aside than any other garment on the planet? Now there are people, when you go to India, uh, you know, where it's cold up in the mountains, they have like blankets that they wear but they don't have certain things on it, like this string on it, all its four corners, unless there were Jewish people there. Okay, but there's no other garment like this, and what it represents we're going to find out a little bit further. Look at verse 16. She put the robe aside until his master came home. Amen? So she held on to this. She knew that she had Yosef. She knew that what she wanted, because she was scorned by Yosef, because he wouldn't sleep with her, he wouldn't do what was bad in God's sight with his master's wife. But the Lord had a plan. But we're not going to look at that right now. We're going to look at specifically the robe. So here she, she has this garment that everybody is going to know it's a Hebrew garment. They're going to know that it is, at this point, actually an Israeli, an Israelite garment, okay? Or Yaakov's name had not been changed at this point. So here it was specific that this garment is different than anybody else's that would have been in the house. So what is so special about this garment that we need to understand? So the first part we looked at in Genesis 37 is that this garment was given to a beloved son by a father who had a covenant. The first part we saw in Genesis 37, Bereshit 37, is that the garment was made for a beloved son, the most loved son. Then this loved son, because his brothers did some nasty things, sold him into slavery, but God raised him up. So here he had this garment, or a garment similar made again, that would set him apart from other people. That specifically would be different than every other person living in this house. It's a garment that sets him aside to one that keeps the covenant. Now let's go a little further to understand what this garment means and what this means to our Heavenly Father. Turn to the book of Bamidbar, Numbers, Chapter 50. 